Hey guys, this is Tim from Tim's Electronics Lab and welcome back to a new video. Now, in this video, uh, I will attempt to repair this Konek. I think it's the TG621. Uh, get the angle correct and the lighting. There you go. A friend of mine uh, tried to use it and he accidentally swapped the polarity and some smoke came out of the actual machine so we need to take it apart and yeah let's have a look what's broken inside now i'm having some troubles oh. getting the there you go battery compartment out now it's able to be powered by size C batteries. I think they are six size C. So that's 1.5 volts each. Or a, well, quite curious 3.5 millimeter jack input. And obviously that's where it uh, went wrong. I'm surprised that it didn't have any polarity, reverse polarity protection. Because usually these things do when they're battery powered. I mean, how many times have you swapped the battery uh, the wrong way around when inserting it into a device? So let's get my screwdriver and take this thing apart. Now this is a home computer, a home sports computer, I think from the late 80s or something not really sure and it has the option to pick a few games uh, hockey tennis and a few others and you actually need to uh, look up the frequency on your television to view the signal so it's completely analog of course no digital things not even composite Oh yeah, we need to yeah. screw them flying out. Oh, actually, let's remove them all. There's one left over here. There we go. And we need to remove this. Yeah, tennis, hockey, handball, and practice. Whatever that means. So I'll remove the little beauty knob from the... Uh, game selection mode and now we should be able to lift this thing up now the speaker is attached to this body so we do need to unscrew it before we can actually remove the white piece now it's actually glued down but a friend of mine already took it apart and removed the glue for from the speaker. So it's really it's a bit of an awkward angle. Let's put the screws aside. There you go, so now the speaker should come loose. There you go. It's a simple, uh, I think it's 0 0.8 watts speaker. Oh, 0 0.2, 8 ohms. 0 0.2 watts and 8 ohms. So yeah, it's pretty basic. This is the RF modulator, the game selector, and the various settings you can choose from now let's remove these rings quite nice that they included these things I think it should prevent any dust going into the into the switch now obviously the PCB is held in place with a few screws so we'll also need to remove those to have a proper look at the PCB And, oh, 
but this one is smaller. So this screw is smaller than these two screws. So please keep that in mind or you'll ruin your plastic. And since this is fairly old plastic, the chances are that it will get ruined rather quickly. Now I assume that we don't need to remove the an actual antenna cable. But it might make life a little bit easier. Whoop. So that's the screw with a washer attached to it. So let's put that one back to where it came from. All right, so as I said, it surprises me that there isn't any reverse polarity protection. It goes straight onto the, the board. Well, there is a diode and I found a schematic online. So I'll just take a quick look at that schematic. So I've got the schematic on my phone so I can look it up fairly easily. And well, let's actually do a visual inspection of this board. Bring you a little closer. Oh, I can see over here that this transistor, let me zoom you in even more. This transistor has really blew apart. And th this leg is completely flapping uh, around in the breeze. And this diode also doesn't look that good, but Let's test it to see what the multimeter thinks. Yeah, that's still 2.9 volts and 0.6 volts. So I think that the diode is still good and it's probably caused by the transistor. And if we look that transistor up on the schematic, so as you can see, this pin is going straight to VCC. So if this one is dead, then it won't do anything. I'm supposing. So let's actually heat up the soldering iron and try to remove that broken transistor. So we can uh, have a go at replacing it. Let's actually put some flux on. Which is pretty hard. Now there's flux on the way, but as you're probably guessing, it didn't arrive yet since uh, I think Chinese uh, New Year got in the way. Now let's add some. Oh, first, let's turn on the solar fume extractor. Let's add some solder to it. All right, now let's remove it. So I think it has already fallen out. No, it didn't. Well, one pin did. But I think if we touch it. We should be able to just pull it out. There you go. So transistor removed. Well, what's actually left of it. And I think the pads look really clean. So the candidate that I chose for the replacement is the S805. It's an NPN transistor, which obviously matches the transistor that was uh, blown up in the first place. The transistor is in place. And it has been soldered in. Now, 
before we continue, I'm also going to add reverse polarity protection to the input since it's not present right now. And for that, I'll be using the 1N5817 Schottky diode, which can handle up to 20 volts. So the forward voltage drop is 172 millivolts, which should be fine since it's being powered from a 9 volt source. Now, so let's remove the positive lead, attach the diode to it. Now, actually, let's do it over here on the connector since this one also goes to, so it makes sense to do it over here. So, a little bit of solder on the diode, and that's connected like so. There you go. So there's your input protection diode. All soldered in place. Now the final thing that we need to do is to actually connect this wire to it. And I'm going to use a heat shrink. And I'm also going to shorten this thing a little. So add some solder over here. Ah, heat shrink. Shove it over and let's solder it to the diode. There you go. Now before we continue, actually let's test that there is a continuity between both pins. Which there isn't. There's a mechanism in the connector that switches basically to the battery power once the mains connector has been disconnected but it seems that it's not working properly that's also how it's supposed to be connecting so that seems to work again bend it a little bit more so that uh, yeah actually works again and the Batteries are available to be chosen as a power input. Let's heat up the heat shrink and put it back together. So I removed the flux and let's actually assemble it back together. So we can have a little test if it's working again. We can test it with my lab bench because we've got a power wire over here. And it just accepts nine volts. So Let's insert the plug, grab some lead and attach it to my lab bench. So I'm assuming that the white cable is the negative and the other one is the positive. Set it to 9 volts and a little bit of current. It's drawing nothing. Oh wait, it's powered off. So now it's powered on. And it's still drawing nothing. 
So let's actually measure the input voltage to see what's happening. Aha! Uh -huh. So we know that the input protection diode is working. So when we swap the cables, we should see a current being drawn. Eee. That sounds about right. This one uh, is back working again. Well, let's, we're going to do the cleaning up of the cable after we've assembled it again. Now let's put this screw back in here. Holds the coax in place. Let's get the PCB screws and the shorter, the smaller one goes into here and the other two go into, well obviously, the other position. Well, the transistor is not really straight, but that really doesn't matter. It's working again and that does matter. Now let me grab the front panel and install the speaker. It's a little tedious. Now the other one is stuck at the back of my multimeter. That constantly happens. But it's no worries because you won't lose a screw again. If you're missing a screw, check the back of your multimeter, since there's a high possibility it will be over there. Oh, wait, we forgot something. We forgot those little pads. They look like Dremel discs, but they most certainly aren't Dremel discs, but they kind of look like they are. There we go. So that's back together. Now we just need to screw in. We just need to screw in the four screws and we should be done. And ready for testing and the battery compartment. And we've got a system that's ready for use again. Now let's clean up that power wire and we'll test it. All right. Turn it off, insert the thing, turn on the brick, and let's turn this one on. There we go. We've got a working system. Let's actually move to the television and play some games, shall we? Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like and consider subscribing. Make sure to send this video to your friends if they've got the same system or you'll just find it interesting. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Oh, hey, hello. Uh, I, I wasn't expecting you over here. Well, if you want, you can also view two other videos of me. So make sure to click them and don't forget to subscribe and like so you always get notified of my new videos.